Both political parties now bracing for election chaos. Speaker Nancy Pelosi warning Democrats that President Trump could win the election if the House has to decide the outcome. Pelosi says she's afraid of a scenario where it's not clear which of the candidates receives the minimum 270 electoral college votes needed to win. Take a look. I've been working on this for a while. Uh, I've been working on almost every scheme he might have to steal the election. Anything we do to increase our number in the House of state delegations or members of Congress, wherever they are, will help us hold the House and enlarge our size, win the Senate, and elect Joe Biden president of the United States on election day or the few days that it takes to count thereafter. So, Dana, doesn't it make sense for Pelosi to try to prepare so that the country doesn't end up in election chaos? All right, Juan, prepare for me to blow your mind oh. with a couple of points, okay? All right, all right. So, um, what she's discussing is very, very unlikely, all right? Just so everybody, like, don't freak out at home. Like, it's very, very unlikely. However, if it happens, the Republicans control 26 delegations, the Democrats control 22. Two states are split. Which ones might they be? Pennsylvania and Michigan. We've heard of those before. These are the battlegrounds. So that's another reason that these are battleground states. So this is a great chance for Nancy Pelosi to direct national money and attention to swing districts. Think of two in particular, Alyssa Plotkin, Michigan 8, and Connor Lamb, Pennsylvania 17. Because the tally of the congressional delegation would occur after the new Congress is sworn in. Again, it's very, very unlikely, but if it happened, it would be an exercise in absolute raw political power, the likes this country has never seen. All right, so Jesse- Is your mind blown? Come on, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. me a oh. bone. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't control it. The, I think the rain has dampened my mind here. Uh, Jesse, uh, we're talking about election chaos. Do you worry that President Trump, by going after the Postal Service, has contributed to the idea that, you know what, we're headed towards chaos and it'll have to be settled in the courts or by Congress. Do I look worried, Williams? I'm actually just <laughs> kind of recoiling from Dana's amazing uh, commentary about what the possibilities are. And I want to touch on what she said. Because it is 26-22 right now. And Juan, why is that? Because under Barack Obama's presidency, Democrats lost a lot of state delegations, largely due to the unpopularity of Obamacare. That's why Republicans have a majority in the state houses, and that's what's going to put them over the edge, because you can foresee a scenario, I know it's unlikely, where it is 269, 269. I've looked at the map a few times. I can see at least two realistic situations where the map comes out like that. The other thing is this, too, which is the Democrats' fault is because in Wisconsin right now, they've kicked up uh, to the federal judge uh, a case where they say, oh, yeah, you can count absentee ballots six days after the election. Republicans sued. That went to the federal courts. And the federal court said, no, that goes against what the state constitution prescribes in the state of Wisconsin. And why did the federal judge say that? Because Trump appointed a lot of federal judges in his three and a half years. And why? Because Harry Reid nuked the filibuster for judicial appointments. Again, another reason why Democrats are really the reason why things are going so badly for Democrats. All right. So, Greg, over the weekend, the president says he might not concede this would be chaos because of the mail-in ballots. He, does, he says you've got to throw out those ballots. What do you say? Well, there's a lot of problems with these mail-in ballots. The absentee ba ballots are pretty good. The states that are using mail-in ballots for, ye for years are pretty good. But there's that third variable, the people doing it for the first time. And we're finding corruption here and there. Um, the point is, I, I find it hilarious that the people talking about chaos as if it's coming when it's already here. The same people that excused and, and quietly energized 100 days of violence are now saying, oh my God, something's gonna happen in November. I've been saying, it's not happening in November, it's happening right now, and it's gonna get worse. I would like, instead of people wringing their hands though, why not come up with a plan? I mean, we prepped for Y2K, we, and we sailed right through that. We should get together, and I mean we as in media, and talk about how do we dial down the intensity of conflict? Because it's our responsibility. We're the people with the hands on the dials, turning up the, turning up the conflict so people get 
at each other's throats. We can turn it down if we want. And I think we should be thinking about that because it's going to get ugly in the next six weeks, seven weeks. And if we don't have a, a decision that is concrete, Biden won or Trump won, that's going to allow Antifa and BLM and all the other groups that are out on the street more excuses to, to, to wage war. Greg, my New Year's resolution was to stop the personal attacks and the name calling. So I've already <laughs> done my part. Well done. To ratchet down the heat. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we appreciate that. Thank you. Martha, very quickly, there are news reports today about Russia hacking a Texas company that sells software Russia. that helps uh, the counties display election results. Uh, but Trump continues to deny the Russian interference. <laughs> Well, you know, unfortunately, the you know any actual efforts by other countries to mess with our elections got so submerged in the political side of that equation that I do think that most of America is not aware of the efforts that that are being made or have been made in a way that we could actually uh, do something about. And I think I think that's the most important thing. The other thing I would say is I, I did a panel with the suburban women. I'm going to show you a little bit of it in in just a moment. Um, and just right down the middle, the, the Democrats wanted, were all going to vote by mail. Republicans all said they wanted to vote in person. And I feel like this is an extension of the COVID divide across the country. And that is, that, that's brought us to this point in the election where uh, Democrats almost feel like it's a protest vote to, to mail in your ballot. Mail in your ballot. We're going to drag this out. We're going to make sure that uh, this is not done on November 3rd. And Republicans, different, you know, different way of looking at it, want very much to walk in there, to know that their vote is going to count, to know that they, they placed it and do it in person. So we'll see.